Last time, we discussed why we need a dedicated noise analysis for simpler, such as a strong arm latch competitor, which cannot be applied by the AC noise we've learned in the Microelectronics 101 textbook. So, what can we do? Think about the time domain simulation for 5 seconds. Correct. The sampler has at least 3 states in time. Therefore, comprehensive transient analysis in the time domain provides a complete simulation of signal transition between different states. Resets, sampling, and regression. Similarly, to capture the noise behavior in time, we must run the transient simulation in the time domain along with the present signal in a normal or mission operation. Then, not only the noise, but also the signal level can be evaluated together to calculate the signal to noise ratio SNR precisely. Sounds straightforward, but how does your circuit include all the thermal noise in transient such that you could perform the transient noise properly? Bingo! Fortunately, all the process foundries should provide the noise model for the circuit designer according to their device calculation data. Then, in your transient noise simulation, you must add the noise models from the foundry into all the device and resistor in your circuit block, such that the noise can be calculated properly. But to speed up the simulation time in any time domain simulator, the transient noise option was disabled in transient. And you must modify the noise flag to enable the noise while running the transient simulation. After understanding how the transient noise can be set up and performed in SPICE, how do we apply the trend noise simulation to get the sampler's input refer noise? Think about the BLA or statistical images for 5 seconds. Yes, in the white noise video, we describe the BLA related to the sigma value in a quick way of evaluating the service link budget. We still can apply the fundamental statistic image here, since we've working on the looming square IMS over one sigma noise value. The BLA is mapped to 34.13%. Then we can simulate the BLA of the sampler at the output decision to define the corresponding input refer noise. But how to do it? Correct. If we can set up your sampler without input offset under zero differential input, the sample output decision should be defined by the noise. Therefore, under this zero mean Gaussian noise of the sampler's input refer noise, you should see equal numbers or probabilities of 1 and 0 at the sampler's output. Please remember to turn on the noise flag to enable the device noise while running the transient simulation. Otherwise, the sampler may enter and stay in a metastable state. After knowing the sampler's BLA or the probability under the Gaussian noise, how do we define the IMS value of its input refer noise? Bingo! The concept of finding the sampler's IMS or one sigma noise in a trend noise simulation is to add a differential input voltage, VSN, such that we can skew the comparator decision and match the BLA equals 34.13%, which fits the one sigma value. Please be advised that many samples are necessary to get an accurate Gaussian distribution and the corresponding probability. Also, after receiving the one sigma value, we usually apply the extrapolation to estimate the outlier noise up to seven sigma per side for the peak noise, but still have the simulation time in a reasonable number of samples in the trend noise. Therefore, let's still lose some accuracy. 
you would like to run the high sigma, 7 or higher noise at the peak noise, you still can just run a longer trend noise with a huge samples to get a peak input refer noise at the high sigma directly in the same procedure. Even though that's not recommended due to the long simulation overhead. Okay, let's talk about the test bench setup of the sample in the transient noise simulation. First, let's pick a very small DC static differential input voltage, YD equals 0.1 mV, and apply it to the sample input. Second, apply the clock to sample the input and get the output decision of the sample D out for at least 10,000 samples. Here, you should know the number of large one and the output D out should be greater than the number of large zero because of the positive 0.1 mV skew voltage. Therefore, third, you should be able to get a probability of one here, which should be greater than 50% because of the applied plus 0.1 mV 1D at input. Fourth, repeat the same procedure from 1 to 3, but change the YD to plus 0.2 mV, if 0.1 mV per step. After sweeping all the YD, if 0.1 mV per step in step fourth, we should be able to complete the probability cumulative distribution function CDF of the output large one versus the input swing. Lastly, we can identify the IMS noise value easily by looking at the probability equals 84.1% over 15.9% on each side to map the input refer noise. So you will see either 0.9 mV or minus 0.9 mV may show us the input refer noise in the IMS is 0.9 mV. Please be advised that we only apply 0.1 mV per step in this case study to save the simulation time in a reasonable voltage resolution. If the expected noise value is very little in a very high sensitivity system, you might need to reduce the sweep voltage step and vice versa. Here are the summarized images of why we need a transient noise analysis for a sample such as a strong upledge competitor. Since we know the AC small signal noise analysis cannot apply to the sample, we must look for other methodologies for evaluating the noise of a sample in all different states in time, which can be done in comprehensive transient analysis. Fortunately, all the process foundry should provide the noise model. Then all you need is to include the noise model and turn on the noise flag to enable the noise in your transient noise, train noise simulation in SPICE. We also describe the concept of only getting the simplest IMS or one sigma noise in a train noise simulation efficiently with enough number of samples. After receiving the one sigma value, we usually apply the extrapolation to estimate the peak noise up to a high sigma outlier per side to save the simulation time without running an enormous number of samples. Lastly, the test bench setup of the sample in the transient noise simulation is shown in the following step. First, apply the 0.1 mV differential input voltage YD. Second, get a sample output decision for at least 10,000 samples. Third, get a probability of large one under applying the plus 0.1 mV YD at the input. Fourth, repeat the same procedure from 1 to 3, but change the YD to plus 0.02 mV if 0.1 mV per step. After sweeping all the YD if 0.1 mV per step in step fourth, the probability of a cumulative distribution function CDF of output large one versus the input swing is down. Fifth, we can identify the IMS noise value easily by looking at the probability equals 84.1% or 
15.9% on each side to map the input refer noise, skewed input swing. For example, you will get either 0.9 mV or minus 0.9 mV as the input refer noise, 0.9 mV. Could you please let me know if you still have questions about the trend noise for the sampler? I will either try my best to answer your questions or make another video to clarify further. Thanks for watching. Before you go, if you are benefiting from those circuit images, I would love to hear your feedback. And please share your comments down below. Lastly, please share the video link with the people who may be better from it.